To continue with the program, I'd like to invite Ms. Amanda Rinquist, co-director at Equal Education in King Williamstown, Eastern Cape, and she will be speaking to us on the issue of the education sector, modern day corruption and state capture. Um, I don't know if that still has that echo. I don't know if they can do anything. The echo is still there, but never mind. I also have quite a loud voice, so I can really speak without the mic if that's necessary. If that, is that what helpful? Say? Or, what do you say without or with the mic? I have quite a loud should voice. should continue, yeah. Can okay. Okay. examples of how we think we can move from a capture to a capable state in the Eastern Cape. So a little, little bit about equal education and what we do. We're a movement of learners, teachers, <coughs> activists, lawyers, journalists who are, um, we have five offices across the country, Eastern Cape, Western Cape, Gauteng, KZN and Limpopo. And um, across these provinces we fight for quality and equality in education. In the Eastern Cape, where I am based, our focus is on the issue of school infrastructure. Um, and these are, sorry, can we just move the presentation to the next slide? Sorry, I don't know who I'm supposed to be directing that to. Okay, we can work on. Enter passport. Sorry. Okay, uh, just a little, okay, so a little bit about uh, uh, while we wait for the presentation to sort itself out. Um, he started 10 years ago on the 1st of Feb, it was our 10 year anniversary. And the, yeah, so like I said, we work primarily with the issue of school infrastructure, and that's based on the norms and standards for school. Okay, the next slide, please. This, the, the norms and standards for school infrastructure. These are some of the schools in which we work in. And the first school is Fukiletsuete Senior Secondary. I really want the audience members to remember this school in the first school because I'm going to come back to the issue of Fukiletsuete. The second is Tolikana in Labode and Carlisle Bridge in Grahamstown. So we work across the province in visiting schools and monitoring the implementation of the norms and standards. Next slide, please. The norms and standards for school infrastructure is a legis is a is, is legislation that was promulgated in 2013, which gives guidelines to what schools must look like across the country. Each school must have a must have certain amount of classrooms per learner. Each school must be made of brick. No schools made out of mud, metal, asbestos, or wood must exist by 2016. Each school must have toilets with a certain ratio, each school must have a water supply and electricity supply. So we monitor and make sure that these things are happening. Um, but, oh, 
Um, but the, the, the reality is, despite four years after the promulgation of the norms and standards, the state of school infrastructure, especially in the Eastern Cape, is in, is in a disastrous state still. Um, and we don't have any, visual, any proper data because the um, <coughs> provincial education department or the national government is not giving us clear or they are mixed, there's mixed, inaccurate data about what is happening. But this is what we do know, if you can just move to the next slide is that currently at, in 2017, um, it's, it's taken the information away on the <coughs> slide, so I'll read it to you. There are 81 schools without any, any water supply in the country. 58 of those are in the Eastern Cape. There are 571 schools without any electricity. 187 of those are in the Eastern Cape. There are 66 schools with no sanitation. 61 of those are in the Eastern Cape. So that means no toilet. There's, there's nothing that exists there. There are 3,245 toilets that are pit, plain pit latrines. 1,585 of those are in the Eastern Cape. A plain pit latrine is really what we can call is a, is a bucket system. It's a structure that's a bucket with a toilet seat. And, and those of you who've been following the Michael Kumape trial know that that is what Michael Kumape fell in and died in Limpopo in 2014. So, so what is happening and why, uh, why aren't schools being built is why um, we're here today. What's happened is, is that the department has a massive capacity, capacity issue. Its focus, its core mandate is on, it, is on teaching and learning. And so it gives the, the building of schools to implementing agent, agents. These are state-owned entities who are given the, the money to build schools or fix schools or build fencing. Um, in the country, a lot of that work is obviously done in the Eastern Cape. These state-owned in entities receive up to 4.5 to 10 percent of the project management fee, and they fund themselves that way. Um, and they, a lot of that money goes to like consult consulting fees, um, getting quantity surveyors, all of these private entities who services they use from in implementing agents, rather than using the Department of Public Works to do those things like it's done in the Western Cape and in Gauteng, mostly in Gauteng. They, they, this is done by the Department of Public Works, but in the Eastern Cape it's done mostly by implementing agents. So the, the, the Department of Education in the Eastern Cape has said we want to move away from the issue of implementing agents, but yet every year they keep giving their money to these state-owned entities. The aim of the state-owned entities in the Eastern Cape was to build 510 schools schools in the last three years, four years, they've actually only built 176 in the last six years, 179 in the last six years. So the, the, implement, the implementing agents are so sluggish and so slow in their delivery that schools are not being built in the Eastern Cape. They're supposed to monitor, they're supposed to monitor <coughs> and manage six contracts, like the quantity surveyor, the engineer, the designer, and then all the builders. So procurement is really their major core focus. But there have been such a lot of issues with the bid evaluation committees and procurement within state-owned entities that we're finding that there's state-owned, that, that there's so much corruption happening, but most importantly that they're giving contractor, contracts to people to build schools who do not have the, um, the capacity to build schools. So I'll get to that a little bit later. Um, this is the, the so the Department of Public Works is meant to build these schools, but these are the, the implementing agents who actually do. So it's IDT, Kucha, the Development Bank, Mbula Trust, which isn't the state of entity, it's actually a private entity that is given all the state money to do these things. Amatola Water and the ECDC, the Eastern Cape Development Corporation. So, so the, one of the key problems, right, is, and the department has said that they've had to cancel so many contracts, so many schools have had to retender the process because there's been such poor handling of tender processes. What the key issue here is that there's this, the, the Department of Public Works started what's called the Construction Industrial Development Board. Um, and they're supposed to look at contractors and say, okay, you looking at all the specifications of your of your company, you have the you don't have the capacity to do this, but let's capacitate you. It was a it was a, a transformative organization. But they stopped looking at, at, at capacitating and rather looked at people's capability. So ah, oh, you've got you've got the capability to do this, 
and we'll give you the contract. But what they didn't look at is capacity. So what happens is you, if I, had a, if I was a contractor and I had the capability to build, a, to build a project for 30 million, I'd get that tender, but no one would know that I've got six tenders for 30 million too. And there's none of that sharing of information among all of these eight implementing agents. So people are taking multiple tenders and, and over, over extending themselves. And the result is that because this information and there's not enough due diligence done by implementing agents, contractors are not, are not able to build these schools. And we're seeing retender processes happening constantly. And, and that's something I'll also mention just, just um, in the next slide. So one of the implementing agents I want to focus on is a state-owned entity called KUHA Development Corporation. Just to say to the members, KUHA, all of the information that I'm, I'm saying about KUHA, we've written to them. They've responded in a Mail and Guardian article. They're aware of the allegations that we made against them. So KUHA is a state-owned entity that like, works across the country, but predominantly in the Eastern Cape, PE and East London. They were given 262 million for school infrastructure in the Eastern Cape. They have 900 projects um, ongoing, but they, we've, only, we've seen poor and incompetent service delivery. Uh, while the, the CEO, Pe um, Pepsi Silang Silinga, earns 4.6 million rand a year, which is just to say double the president's salary. Um, and what we've seen is that um, is that Kuka has overextended itself, it's not checking, it's, 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 got, it's procuring on a very bad level, and it's, it's, as a result, so many of their projects, almost more than half of their projects, are, have not been completed. Um, the Auditor General, in their, pub, in their PMFA report, revealed that they didn't exercise proper oversight, there was non-compliance of um, the relevant legislature, especially like procurement legislature. Um, they have, there was, um, in, there was instability in vacancies and there was incompetency to the point that they, there was also they're responsible for three million rand in irregular expenditure in the school infrastructure project and another eight million rand in wasteful and fruitless expenditure. That's where they've started a school, the tender process hasn't worked and they've had to do it again. And that's amounted to eight million in fruitless um, expenditure. And I want to talk about Kuka and the specific needs with them. This is a school where there are no proper toilets. It's made completely of of, um, of wood and also mostly just gaping holes in the in the school. Kuka was given the contract in 2014 to build the school. Nothing has happened in the last four years. Um, they we know they have not even put out the tender. They've just fenced the fenced the new land and see that they're doing research on the on the soil but that's taken them four years the reason that it's taken them four years is while they haven't tended the process there's so much political instability um, there's so much um, fractionalism we don't even know what why the reasoning has been so vague from them and while the school remains um, the school remains unbuilt and learners Live, the school is so far from everything that learners sleep in their classrooms also when they're in the trick. And that's the reason why we came here today to the People's Tribunal. We're a membership-based organization and we take our mandate from the members. We have more than 4,000 young equalizers across the country, uh, about 1,300 which are in the Eastern Cape. And this is an issue that is important to them and we thought important for this People's Tribunal. That there are state-owned entities given a large amount of money to build schools at the and it's not, it hasn't been happening because of a number, a number of issues. Um, and, and what we want today is to say that we want to ask for the creation of a capable state, which is to, is to capacitate the Department of Public Works, who is mandated by the Constitution to do this kind of work, who, whose understanding of the, the idea of the government institute of being people focused, of having the Batavillian principles, of, and of having very strict laws when it comes to um, supply chain management and, and having their own internal consultants rather than the constant use of external ones. Um, we also want to highlight the, the political instability that's happening in Eastern Cape. Procurement happens, pro happens from, by the HOD. The HOD is the, is, the, is the chief procurement officer in charge of procurement. But under the current MEC in the Eastern Cape, Mandla Makapula, 
who's been there since 2011, he's had nine HODs. And it really is a case of it's not us, it's you, Mandala Makapula. Nine HODs in eight years. And in the Eastern Cape, since, since 1994, there's been 12 HODs. Um, and this is, and, and we're expecting more now that Oscar Mabuyani has been made the Eastern Cape head. We're ex Monday, there are rumors of a cabinet reshuffle. Cabinet reshuffle means the MEC is going to get reshuffled, which means the HOD needs to be linked to the MEC, which again, we'll, wherever inroads have been made in the last two years with the new HOD, we're afraid it's going to create more and more political instability. We want Manda Makapula to, to step down. He's, he's, hasn't been doing what he needs to do. But again, this idea that party and politics is so closely linked to the pro provision of service delivery is a crisis. We cannot, schools cannot depend on who is the premier. It must depend on what constitutional obligations they are. And so just in closing, we really want to say that our recommendations is that we should really push for open bid committees in procurement in South Africa. We should really create, make sure that bad, bad contractors that are not capable are blacklisted um, and that there's reporting and this information on state on implementing agents and their projects are made public so that schools can hold um, these implementing agents um, accountable. Oh, yeah, so we're asking for more accountability. My time is running. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> I hand over to my colleagues to see whether we have any questions. Yeah, yeah, you start. Thanks, uh, Amanda. Uh, just a, a question about uh, you make a, a lot about uh, state entities, um, and sometimes uh, there was reference to departments. Do you have a, a definition of what, what, what these entities are? So as the, these entities are, um, so in, 1990, in, in the year 2000, um, between 1995 and, and the year 2000, um, the Department of Public Works became, in, in the Eastern Cape, became less capable of fulfilling its mandate. As a result, they start, between those two years, they started a number of implementing agents like Industrial Development Corporation, I am Industrial Development Trust, IDT and COPA. So these are state-owned entities that are under the Department of Treasury. Most of them are under the Department of Treasury. Some of them are under the Department of Public Works. And they are state-owned entities who self-fund. So they're not given a lot of money from Treasury. They're given some operational costs, but they make their money from the projects that they are given from either the Eastern Cape Education Department. Some of them are given it from the Department of Higher Education, like KUHA helps with Tibet College, um, some Tibet colleges, so they get their money, they stay down, but they get their money from their own projects, if that answers the question. And yeah, so they profit for profit, even though they stay down, and they, some of them make a lot. Kucha is a very successful uh, state owned entity, so is IDT. Um, they, make, they make a lot of profit off of their very large amount of projects that they get. And at the bottom of that project priority list seems to be school infrastructure. KUKA has done a lot to industrialize PE and PE's harbor, for example, and they're doing great work there. But we think that they're overextending themselves. That's one of the reasons. Yeah, if I may, uh, sure. uh, Thank you for your presentation. Did you look into, you, you spoke about the lack of capacity and competency of some of the contractors and the implementing agents. Did you look at any one of them that you can pinpoint about any suspicious circumstances on how they got the contract? For instance, is there a relationship? Uh, I get your point that they ignored the tender criteria. Can you point to something? So I, th I think I should have started. Thank you very much for the question, Member Pillay. Um, I think I should have started out by saying that this is very new findings and new teachings that we've done since 2016 and since going since in the last year and a half visiting schools and saying we have this implementing agent, they're not doing anything. So it is new research, and we haven't been able to um, pinpoint scrupulously like 
dodgy dealings between contractors and um, implementing agency. In fact, I think that it's what we have discovered is that it's not corruption on the contractor's part. In fact, these are small black-owned businesses who are trying really hard to um, be able to build schools, but because implementing agents are not competent, they're not giving them, you get, a contractor gets money for certain deliverables. You put in the foundation, you build the wall halfway up, you put in windows, and then the department or the implementing agent releases money. But because of the lack of compliance and, the, and, oh, and lack of capacity in implementing agents, contractors, which are small black-owned businesses, are not getting their money in time, and so they're not able to fulfill, fulfill or complete projects. This is not because of a lack of capacity, a lack of competency or corruption on the part of contractors in the Eastern Cape. It's really on the, on the part of implementing agents and departments who are not working together also to roll out money or roll out planning. What we have discovered is that there are, um, there are 45, one project manager has 45 schools he has to look after when the required is 10 schools. And so, the, I wouldn't say that there's corruption, but I would say that the, that the money is not being properly used. Like lots of money is given by the Department of Education for, for, for capacitating implementing agents, for getting the right amount of project managers. And that money, we don't know what it's being used for because it's not being used to, to pay contractors on time. All right, thank you. Okay, I have a few procedural issues. I take it that we will get this material in writing at some stage? Yes. Secondly, the numbers and so on that you mentioned, uh, they're not the result of your own investigation, but you probably got them from somewhere. So, we do a lot of field research, but a lot of it we're relying on um, Auditor General's report, TBE's a CD report, um, portfolio committee reports, so it will be very good in your summary uh, for us to know where the information has come from so that we can put it properly in its context. Thirdly, there are the fact that there's poor infrastructure and poor education, etc., is, is, is beyond dispute as far as the Eastern Cape is concerned. And I would imagine that Nobody, even the Eastern Cape government, will not deny it. Is there any matter in your uh, submission which, in your view, will be denied by the governmental authority? <clears throat> I think that our, our key is that there's not enough Will you give us a list at the end of your summary of those aspects which you think are likely to be in dispute and which we need to look at more carefully because then we'll rely on your opinion as a starting point um, and take it from there. Is that all right? Yes. By when do you think we'll get this material? By when? The next two weeks, in, the, in two weeks' time? Two weeks' time. Sorry? Two weeks' time. Two weeks. Two weeks. In two weeks' time. Okay, but then that, that, that will mean that we will not be able to reach any preliminary conclusions in relation to this matter uh, until two weeks. But I think you must speak to the evidence leaders and try and work it out. Um, and I'll talk to my colleagues. Maybe they have different views on the issues during the break. I wonder whether my colleagues have any follow-up arising out of the questions that I've asked? No. No? no? All right. So, uh, I think, thank you very much. That, that, that finishes that. It is now a little after 10.45. We were supposed to break for tea from 10.45 until 11.15. My colleagues and I suggest that we go on because we've lost a lot of time. But you, all of you have human rights too so that if any of you suggest that you want even a 15-minute break, I think we'll be inclined to concede. But our position is that we've lost a lot of time. Let's push on until 12.45.
for sure. Mm -hmm. They continue. There's no Sorry. indication. What uh, can you give us some indication of whether we should carry on? Are you happy to push on? Yeah. Great.